Welcome to an exclusive skill capped guide for BFA patch 8.3. Throughout the final season of BFA, we'll be releasing select guides from our site here on YouTube. If you're interested in seeing more new content like this every week, alongside our exclusive matchup review series in which we cover in detail exactly how to win the hardest and most popular matchups, head over to skillcap.com. Hey guys, Zot here, and welcome to another video. With the release of 8.3, we saw the addition of some new trinkets, not only from the new raid, but also from PvP and the newly added Mythic Plus dungeons. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the most overpowered ones, what classes you need to get them on, and exploring how they work, how you get them, and why they're so overpowered. So let's get this started. Our first new overpowered trinket is going to be the Gladiator's Spike. This trinket on release was pretty much shunned by everybody. Simply looking at it you think, okay yeah that's awful, but in reality this is probably the strongest trinket right now if used well. Gladiator's Spike provides passive intellect and an on use effect. This on use lobs a void pool at a destination of your choice. Enemies within the pool instantly have their corruption increased by 20 on top of being slowed by 60%. Now, this in itself is pretty good. With most players not going over the 39 corruption threshold, players tend to be around 30 corruption in PvP, if they've been somewhat lucky. Unless you're of course like me and have none. This means when used, it will instantly put them above 40. And if you've played with a lot of corruption, you'll know just how dangerous the man from beyond is, especially when it comes to arena and even more so when you go way over that 40 threshold. Although that's not all this trinket does. Whilst inside of the pool, not only is your corruption increased by a static 20, you then gain free corruption every second on top of that whilst inside of the pool, decaying at the same rate whilst you're outside. Okay, so now people understand corruption a little better, this sounds pretty good if you can keep them inside. However, what people didn't first know about this trinket is the corruption whilst inside actually stacks the more gladiator spike trinkets you have on your team. So if you thought triple maledict was bad, wait until you face triple spike. If you combine three of these onto a target, that target will gain nine corruption every second whilst inside of the pool, on top of the already static 20. And as we know, these corruption effects get worse and worse the higher corruption you go meaning your man from beyond is going to hit you before you can blink. Your eye is going to be the entire map and the slow is going to feel like you're rooted. Oh, and the best part of this trinket is it doesn't deal damage. This means you can stack it in things like sap before you even open. So what classes should use a spike? Well, to be honest, spike can work on every single class. All it depends on is if you're playing a composition that can lock somebody down inside of it and if your team wants to coordinate, as this trinket isn't great when you're the only one using it, similar to how Maledict worked. Okay, so to get your own Gladiator Spike, you can finish the third weekly conquest cap of the season, which rewards you a trinket, and then go ahead and pick a Spike. Or otherwise, the only way is to get a lucky drop from winning a competitive PvP game. The next overpowered trinket on our list is the Forbidden Obsidian Claw. The Obsidian Claw gives passive intellect as well as an extremely strong on use, having a two minute cooldown. On use of this trinket is of course what makes it so strong. It applies a debuff to the target for 8.5 seconds. Every time this ticks, it will deal damage and in turn restore mana to you. The Obsidian Claw also scales with haste, meaning for the 8.5 seconds it's up, you're going to get more ticks, which in turn will give you more damage and more mana. The damage portion attached can also critical strike. So this is good for two reasons. First, the damage is just insane and scales incredibly hard. I personally have a heroic one and with a decent amount of haste, the on use effect easily deals upwards of 150k damage with a single use. So 150k damage, one trinket, yeah, you can see why this is good. And that's just the damage. The mana restored also scales with haste. So if you're a healer, this is not only going to be dealing good damage to your target, but will also restore about 15k mana, which every two minutes is actually very insane. The only downside of this trinket is that the debuff you apply to targets is magic. So therefore it can be dispelled or removed by things like Cloak of Shadows. This means much like you should be used to with the Gladiator's Maledict, making sure to track the enemy's healer dispel 
or using it when they're unable to is a necessity to making the most out of this trinket. So it's great for damage and good for damage dealers and great for mana if you're a healer, which makes this trinket a must have for every intellect user when it comes to PvP. To get your own Forbidden Obsidian Claw, you're going to have to venture inside of the new raid, Nyalofa the Waking City, and you'll find this as a drop from the second boss, Mount, which can even be accessed by Pugs on Mythic. The trinket has a chance to drop for all intellect users. Moving on, our next overpowered trinket is going to be the writhing segment of Jestergath. This trinket gives passive agility or strength and comes with an on-use proc on a relatively short cooldown, 1 minute and 20 seconds to be exact. What this proc does is cause an eruption of spines around you in a small area, around 8 yards. What makes this trinket so extremely overpowered right now is the fact it's not only instant damage off the global cooldown, but just how much damage it's dealing. I've personally had this trinket on heroic difficulty, hitting targets for over 150k damage, and that's instant and off the global as I mentioned. Now this trinket is obviously insanely broken damage wise, but it does come with two major drawbacks. First is that the damage it deals is split between the targets it hits, and you primarily want to be using this on a singled out enemy, otherwise the damage isn't going to be making as much impact. To deal with this though, you can learn to position before you use it. Stepping to the side and edging the damage when targets are stacked could be a great way to still get the isolated damage off. The second drawback is that the damage it deals is actually physical. This means it's going to be affected by armour. So whilst this trinket can deal upwards of 150k on low armoured targets, like mages for instance, its damage isn't going to be as high on things like warriors, even though the damage done to heavy armour targets is still very high if they're isolated. As for classes that should use this, any strength or agility classes who want some added burst, and especially windwalkers and rogues. Combining this with an envenom or a touch of death can quickly 100 to zeros enemies without them being able to even react. And to get your own eruption trinket, it comes, as the name suggests, from Drestergath, inside of the new raid, and drops for all agility or strength DPS users. Our next trinket going onto this list is similar to our Drestergath trinket, once more providing agility or strength and a damage on use, this time on a 2 minute cooldown. The remote guidance device causes a mecha cycle to come and then crash into the target you use it on, dealing again very high physical damage to the initial target, with spread fire damage after the initial hit. Why this is so overpowered is due to the raw damage this proc does to the main target it hits, easily dealing 100k damage from a single use, and that's if it doesn't crit. Although, in my opinion, this trinket is a little weaker when compared to our Drestergaff trinket due to a few more drawbacks. Again, it's physical damage, so it's going to be dealing less damage to high armoured targets. Furthermore, unlike the Drestergaff trinket, the damage is not instant. As you can see in these clips that have been playing, when used, the bike spawns in a random location and then drives into your target meaning it can often take a few seconds before the damage connects. Funnily enough though, this bike can also be blocked. It can hit structures like pillars, pets and even gateways. Like here, we see the bike spawn miles behind the rogue using it and it ends up unluckily hitting a pet on its way. But nonetheless, it's still incredibly strong and a great trinket to have for all burst, agility and strength users. The remote guidance device though is especially good on windwalkers and rogues yet again. So to pick up your own remote guidance device, you're going to have to get into Mythic Plus and begin farming the recently added dungeon, Mechagon Junkyard. Our last trinket on this list is going to be a little different. It's the revitalizing voodoo totem. This one is for healers what Drestergaff is for melee. The voodoo totem has passive intellect and an on-use effect that can be used every minute and a half. The on-use effect on this heals the target for a set amount every half a second, stacking up to 13 times. The healing from this starts low and then ramps up over the course of the 13 seconds. What makes this so strong is just how potent the healing is. This trinket, when used on a target, easily does upwards of 300k healing over the course of the 13 seconds. To put that into perspective, geared characters have give or take around 500k health, so this trinket heals for over half of their health with no drawbacks at all. Why this is extra good though is for a few reasons. Obviously, it's a heal over time. 
This means you can use this before CC lands on you to keep your target sustained whilst you're inside of that crowd control. It's also usable while you're locked out of course. So if you get kicked and you or your teammates are in danger, no worries, you can just pop the voodoo totem on them and let it do its work. In regards to what healer should use this one, I'm going to go ahead and say every single healer without a doubt. This is just too strong not to use. And to get one for yourself, it's going to be off to Mythic Plus, as this is a drop from the dungeon Atal Dazar. Okay then guys, that's five trinkets that we're going to be for sure seeing have a huge impact in PvP for this new season. As always, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching and good luck farming.